Hey fifth grade, our screencast today is on using basic facts to approximate or estimate decimal quotients. And that's when we have two digit divisors. And we're also gonna be looking at where that decimal point is going once we get our answer. So to start off, let's try an application problem that involves a little bit of problem solving also. So Miss Hines spent $12 on 30 bus tokens for the field trip. What was the cost of 12 tokens instead of all 30? So the first step in this problem is to find out how much she spent on just one token. We know that she bought 30, but I need to find out how much she spent on one in order to figure out how much she spent on 12. So I'll start out the problem by writing out $12 divided by 30. And I know from previous lessons, we can break that 30 up into 3 and 10. And since I know my math facts, I can definitely do 12 divided by 3 first. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. And so then that's 4 divided by 10. And using our place value strategies, I know I could just move that decimal one over to the left. So this will mean 40 cents was spent on one token. So now that I know how much she spent on one bus token, I can figure out how much she spent on 12. So I'm thinking if one bus token was 40 cents, I need to know how many um, dollars and cents she spent on 12 units or 12 tokens. So that's going to be multiplication. I'm going to set up 0 0.40 times 12. And so 2 times 0 is 0. 4 times 2 is 8. 2 times 0 is 0. Now I'm working in the tens place. One times zero is zero. Four times one is four. Okay, and then when we add, we get 480 and we swoop in two places. So she spent $4.80 on 12 tokens. And that's our final answer. We'll go into our actual objective now. So in the first chunk of our lessons, we were working on rounding our decimal factors to estimate the product. This time we'll estimate quotients by rounding the hole that we start with as well as rounding the divisor. So whereas before we started with just rounding the divisor and then finding multiples, we'll actually round both numbers this time. Okay, so just as we did before, we will round the divisor first. So what is 17 rounded to the nearest 10? Well, that would be 20. We recorded our estimation, and now we need to round our whole that we're starting with, 39 and 1 tenth, to a number that can easily be divided by 20. We could round 39.1 or 39 and 1 tenth to 40. 40 divided by 20 is much easier um, to divide than what we initially started with. So 40 divided by 20 would be like doing four divided by two. And so that would give us two. And that means we could write this original problem, our estimate or our estimated quotient would be around two. And when we mean to write like the estimated quotient is or it's around, we put a squiggly equal sign. Okay, so now we're going to try it with a dividend that has the same numbers as the first dividend, but the decimal point is in a different spot. Do you see this is 39.1 and this is 3.91? So 
So we're still gonna round our divisor to 20. But now instead of rounding this to 40, that wouldn't make sense. This is like having $3.91. It would make more sense now to round this number to four. So this problem would be like doing four divided by 20. Think if you had $4 and you broke it up into 20 groups. You could also think of this problem by moving the decimal points in for each of these. So I could move the decimal point in here and here. And so now this problem would be like I'm doing 4 tenths divided by 2. And I know if I took 4 tenths, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I divided them into two groups, I would have 2 in each group. So 2 tenths would be our answer. And that makes sense because if I started with around $4 and broke it up into around 20 groups, I wouldn't have very much in each group. This would be like having 20 cents in each group. Okay, so estimating is really useful because it helps give us a starting place when we need to find the actual quotient, just like with whole numbers. I wasn't sure of the value of this problem right away or this problem right away. I can't do that in my head, but an estimate can help me think about the value of the quotient when I have a smaller number being divided by a larger number. Like if I had 24 tenths divided by 12, that would be a lot easier to do. All right, so we're gonna try another problem that looks similar. And for problem two, you're going to notice that we still have dividends that look the same, but the decimal point is in a different spot. Our divisors are still equal though. Okay, so we have 63 and 6 tenths divided by 73. I'm gonna round 73 to the nearest 10, so that would be 70. And then if I round 63 and 6 tenths, I could just round it to the nearest whole number, so 63. I can think about this problem like I have maybe bags of rice. So if I have 63.6 pounds of rice and I'm trying to put them into 73 bags, I need to know how many pounds of rice are going in each bag. So if I think about problems like this, almost like they're story problems, it'll help me make more sense of it. So I'm thinking, will the number of pounds in each bag be more than one pound or less than one pound? In my head, I'm thinking that it should probably be less than one pound because there are 73 bags, but there are only 63 pounds. And that's not enough to put one pound in each bag. So if it's less than one pound, I know my answer is gonna be less than one whole number. If I had one pound in each bag, I would need exactly 73 pounds to start with and we don't have that much. So that's gonna help me figure out when we're estimating what my final estimate is, my final estimated quotient is. So we estimated the divider, divisor is 70, and I can see a 63 from this whole, and 63 is a multiple of seven. So these are compatible numbers, like 63 divided by seven would be nine. So I can work with that in an easy way Our estimation in standard form would be 63 divided by 70. And so I could do 63 divided by 7 divided by 10. 63 divided by 7 is 9. And 9 divided by 10 is 0 0.9. So that actually gets us underneath 1, one whole number. Our estimated quotient therefore will be 9 tenths when we actually solve this problem out for real it should be somewhere really close to around 9 tenths and now let's try it again with um, our decimal point in a different spot so now this would be like doing 6.3 divided by 70 
I could use my trick again where I move each decimal point one over. So I have 0 0.63 or 63 hundredths divided by 7. And so 63 divided by 7 is 9. And then I move my decimal point 1, 2, 1, 2. So now we have 9 hundredths. That makes sense as an estimated quotient, especially when we did this first problem. Because now instead of 63 pounds, we only have 6 pounds or 6.3 pounds. So every bag is going to have way less than this over here. Our answer should be way smaller. All right, and we're going to try one more problem like this. And so we have 11 and 72 hundredths divided by 42. We're going to start by estimating the divisor. So 42 is close to 40. And now I need a multiple of 4 that is close to 11 and 72 hundredths. Then we can find our estimated quotient. So I know that this would be close to 12. And 12 whole numbers could be broken up into 12 hundred hundredths. So I'm going to write it out like this. 12 divided by 40. Twelve divided by four is equal to three. And then I'm really, when I divide by four first, I'm really doing this. I'm breaking the 40 up into four divided by 10. So 12 divided by four is our three. And then I need to divide my three by that 10 still. So that is how this turns into three tenths as our estimated quotient. There are a couple other ways that you could think of this problem. So what we did right now was very similar to if we started out with like 1,200 hundredths and then we put that into 40 groups. So that would be like 120 hundredths, those little blue cubes divided by four, and then we would have 30 hundredths in each group, and that's the same as three tenths. You could also think of this problem in tenths. So you could maybe think of it as like having 120 tenths divided by 10 divided by four. So that would be 12 tenths divided by four, and 12 tenths put into four groups would be three tenths. This is the way that's most similar to what we've been practicing. This would be like going back and using our place value blocks, those blue hundreds cubes and tens rods. So this is still about picking the strategy that's working best for you and understanding how to estimate and how to look at if your quotient is reasonable or not. Thanks so much.